Let's see. Next we have Arshad Hussain. Let's see. Uh, Arshad is a Linux kernel programmer. Uh, he joined Seagate's Luster team at the end of 2015. He works on Luster bugs and improvements. Arshad, let's give him a hand. Thank you, Stephen. Hello, everyone. So, so today's topic is uh, online patching for Luster. And uh, this is a work in progress. Uh, we have, we got it going for 2.7. And uh, uh, we got it working for 2.7. And uh, it's kind of a work in progress for now. Uh, so we move on to agenda. So we want to, uh, I want to just uh, say that it's a, we'll discuss k-patch basics and how the k-patch is applied, k-patch limitation, uh, luster issues which was found, uh, luster changes completed. Uh, we'll discuss about a little bit about Luster test and open issues and future work. So, K patch technology was introduced uh, by Red Hat in 2014. So, this is essentially a technology that you can patch the running kernel immediately. Uh, this is licensed for GPL v2. So, what it does is what KPatch basically does is, is that it uses uh, already a kernel feature which is there for tracing called ftrace. And once you build uh, with KPatch, once you build with ftrace, what happens uh, is that the compiler builds the no-op on top of it. It builds with the no-op, which essentially is used by ftrace to actually hook on to tracing. What KPatch does is that it uses uh, this to hijack and then return to a new function, essentially giving impression that, uh, uh, that uh, the new function is running as if nothing has happened. So I'll discuss about stop machine in a while, uh, but it has a single switching point. That means either the new uh, patch is running or the old patch, the new patch uh, module load is failed and the old patch keeps running. So it's pretty safe because of using of the stop machine. It is compatible with kdump and crash. Uh, that means a new function is agnostic to kdump and crash. You'll see everything similar to what it is. And k, uh, k patch also have uh, user hooks, which we'll discuss a little while. First, k-patch process. Uh, so as we can see that we have an original source, and from that source, uh, original module is built. Uh, now, this module, if there is a requirement, so be it. Uh, so we change the patch, uh, we change the source, and k-patch provides uh, two utilities. Uh, called kpatch build and kpatch load. The first utility is kpatch build, which essentially prepares the source in such a way that it could be inserted. In this slide, uh, we move on from one to two, where we have source, then from two to three, where we have a new patch KO, and step four, we see that we have already running module, and then we have a patch module. So kpatch also have a second utility called kpatch load, which allows uh, the kpatch to load and unload the module. So in this case, if we give kpatch load followed by a new patch, this is where the stop machine comes in. It freezes all the threads and interrupts. 
It goes and checks all the stack and sees that if none of them is running, call stack basically, and if not, it jumps on the return address. It modifies to run the new patch. If it fails for some reason, your old patch keeps running. Uh, nothing is lost there. The, the good point about load is that you can have incremental loads and you can bring it down. So it's like a stack, it goes up and goes down. So the fifth step is that once the k-patch load is actually completed, you see a new, a new patch running. So this, the whole flow which is shown here, we'll actually see in respect with how we have done it for Luster. So, but before that, we'll just go through a little bit of k-patch limitations. So the k-patch is not, it doesn't patch variables or structure, it replaces the whole function. That means if there's an attempt to change a single static variables, those kind, it could be done, but it's, it's not recommended and it's actually used for, to replace the whole function. So the second is the k-patch, it cannot patch the running functions. What this implies is that if, if you have a patched module which you want to insert and and it and it touches a lot of function points and and one of them is actually running and if you stop it using stop machine and it could actually break the system or it could cause side effects then of course it cannot run so k patch makes sure that using stop machine it stops all the threads uh, and interrupts to freeze all processes and threads before making switch to a new function. And I've, as, as I've said that, it does not modify statically allocated variable. Any variable will have a scope of a lifetime. Uh, it is recommended not to do that. A patch is actually used for to patch function in full. So the luster issue, what we found while applying the online patching or the K patch to luster is that our goal was to actually do a POC in such a way that we could demonstrate that there's no active process, act, there's no active process in queue and we could apply it even though we are doing a, a testing and IO which is going on. What kpatch does is it uses a diff. So if you look at a debug log, so it says that the line number which is highlighted in red, so it uses a macro underscore underscore line. This signifies that, and this macro changes for every line resulting in the patched module to be very large. Once the patch module is relatively large, it takes long time to insert, which actually has a side effect which I'll discuss in a little while. So the first thing was this. So even though we were changing a one small line, because of this, we were generating and hitting a lot of entry points there. So the second is the static variables and debug logs are removed. So this is kind of, we put it here, but so any static variables and debug logs, if any, would be removed here. So, but uh, the delays during stop machine. So as step number five said that when you're doing a k-patch K load, it stops all the threads and interrupts, switches to a new function. It does some safety check before switching. So if that safety, and that safety check is expensive and time consuming. So what happens is once if you have a module that touches a lot of entry points, uh, the eviction tends to happen. So uh, we circumvented that by having a user hook to actually reset the timer, but uh, kpatch essentially is, uh, it's ideal for having a hot fixes, which is minimal in size and consumer vulnerabilities kind of a thing. And the final point in the issue found was 
to minimize the live objects. That means that we made sure that we had RPC barrier and no process was active when we were actually doing a k-patch load. Cluster changes that was completed to get it working was the first thing we did was uh, to, to, to get less debug info. So, we, sorry, we removed the line numbers and marked hard coded as zero for now. Uh, we'll see how to circumvent this in future, but for now, if this is a hot fix, we could still get away with it. Uh, we still have a git hash and we could still home on to a line number that way. But for, for a POC like this, we made sure that we were not, the underscore line underscore was not causing a lot of function to be touched and we just uh, removed the line number to be zero for now. So no use of static variables in debug logs. And to make calls from thread main function to non-static function only, that means that uh, so any function is a function pointer, we make sure that we don't touch that. And so because that increases the call, uh, touches the call stack and it increases the time for the K module, K patch load to insert. And finally, we have added a PTL RPC barrier with timeouts. And the step taken was uh, to stop processing of incoming requests except BRW and cancel, so that we'll show it with an example which is coming through next. So disable BRWs, disable cancel as a step three, flush buffers and all commits. Commits. Stop barrier and about patching on timeout. So once the step is done, you can see that in the results later that modules are inserted there. And the only thing is that we add a hook to refresh the timers. So the other way, what we've also experimenting is that we could actually tame, change the timers up front and then start the PTL RPC barrier. So these are the test results. Uh, simulate to 2,000 clients. Actually, these are 10 clients with IB network, 200 mounts per clients. And this is a simple command which has been executed, a simple DD command. And the server is, it has two MDS and two OSTs. So this is what we get when we do a k-patch load here. So you can see that it spits out three important information here. In this case, all active requests, that means all active requests minus cancel and BRW requests, it's zero for now. You can see that cancels and BRW requests is 289 and all cancel requests is zero. So N, R, N requests active, this is what holds, uh, this is the modification that has been done, which holds uh, all the information about active, cancel BRW and cancel request. And finally, uh, the third last slide says that it took one second for the, for the barrier and the, cat, the K patch was a success. So this is, this, uh, this one was on the OST side. This test was on the OST side. This is a racer test on 10 clients with 50 mounts per clients and the command ex executed is racer. That means this is on the MDS side. The server configuration stays the same which is MDS count is two or no, OST count is two. So again, the same K patch load was applied, the same results here. 
It's just that all active requests uh, minus cancel and BRW in this case was a little higher. The cancel and BRW was zero, and the cancel request was zero in this case. Just uh, so K patch gives the ability to actually immediately patch a running kernel. What we did was we did series of changes to make sure we could make it run it on Luster. So we could also run it on a single node by making a little small modification on the client side too, where we added a freeze and freeze, which was just returning zero for now. But this is purely on the server side. Clients we are not concerned for now. And the, the results for now is that we could successfully do it for DD, we could successfully do it for Racer, for multiple clients, and huge mount points. So this being a work in progress, so we still have open issues, and there's a future work on this going on. So the most primary is that we need to test across across the gamut of all subsystems, all components beyond IO, uh, that is MDS, LOD, OSP, OSS, uh, test across with the stress IO using complex racer or sequential IO, basically stress it out and then try loading patches uh, which covers real life bug scenarios, those kind of a thing. That, that we have not done. That, that's still pending. Which essentially boils down to test with complex setup with larger clients and OSs. And most importantly, uh, what we have not done is we have not looked into how this will be addressed as a deployment process. That means uh, once we have a patch module, how will that be signed? How will actually that goes to client? Uh, how will client install it? There are, there are a lot of uh, ideas saying that we probably should be having a repo. And once everything is tested, a client could simply yum install and just run it. But those kind of things, uh, it's still work in progress and we are not touched yet. It, it's a future work for us. So I've quickly completed it, so I'll take your questions now. Or like you can yell. I'm so sorry. We have a great question from the almost the back row. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. I mean, I always have questions, but I don't want to be the only person asking questions here. Sure. Um, nice. Anyways, um, one question, does this hook in with the kernel um, freeze architecture so that you could potentially um, do like suspend and resume of Lustre clients or something like that? Because I know there's hooks in the kernel for, you know, laptop suspend and resume, and they allow you to, you know, flush state like RPCs in flight and things like that, if we were to hook into them, we've just never implemented it. I'm wondering if this is how you did your, your barriers and things. 
And just, uh, is your question asking how I have we have implemented barriers? Yes. Okay. And Andrew, you want to answer? Uh, the main intention was to use Kipatch on the server side, so we don't need it. And, but it works, so we tested it with clients also. So. Since you are mostly concentrating on the server side, did you compare this like 25 seconds with actual failover times? Like, is there actually a big win over there with? versus doing a real failover that is much faster nowadays than it used to be. Correct, so uh, what your question is that uh, the timeout issue, right? Your whole thing shows that you did your live patching in 25 seconds. So did you try the same scenario, but do a real server failover where you don't play True. those tricks, but just, you know, do a failover. How long did that take? Like, how much time are you winning? Is Correct. this cat, cat worth skinning? True, Alex. So, uh, no. So we have uh, it, so we have hooks to actually modify timers, but uh, we have not tested that. That part for the failover, it's a good question. We have not tested it. Still, uh, we have to verify that part. And we want to add something. With failover, there is another issue when um, the clients reconnect, it may uh, extend this time for failover for a long period. In this case, when you apply key patch, we have a fixed time for applying. No, for applying. Uh, we have not measured it on the real system. Any more questions? Well, thank you very much. Uh, special, uh, uh, just, just finally, I want to thank Andre. He's the project lead for this and a great mentor. Now, thank you.